Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Man, it's just a time of waiting right now. Let's take a look around the garden. Now that summer is here in earnest, in terms of the heat, uh, you know, all my spring crops are starting to wind down, except some of my tomatoes, and I'll show you those. But uh, there's not a whole lot going on in the garden. We put in our summer crops in one of our beds here. They're coming up. I'll show you that. But everything else, I'm just kind of waiting on. I'm waiting on fruit to ripen. I'm waiting on peppers to turn colors. I'm waiting on squash to, to ripen up. And uh, yeah, not a lot. So I thought I'd just walk you around the garden today. Look at all those tomatoes. Somebody was asking me, what am I going to do with all these tomatoes? Well, I uh, made tomato sauce. The other day, I about four bags of these, four gallons of these, plus a little bit more. Put them in a big pot, along with all the other tomatoes that I had in the house. And we worked us up some delicious tomato sauce. I canned about 12 pints, put that away. Yeah, you can make sauce out of these cherry tomatoes. It makes a real good sauce, actually. So I like to pick them about like that just before they get to their mature ripeness I let them ripen inside if I leave them out here the birds are gonna get them so something like that what I'll do is I'll put them in a gallon bag and I'll put them in the freezer just freeze them whole you don't have to blanch them you don't have to do any of that nonsense not for tomatoes you can just freeze them whole then when I need them, I'll bring them out and you've got some cherry tomatoes and the skins are already burst. Because once you feed them, uh, and once you freeze them, the skins burst and that makes it real easy for making sauce. So we'll pick most of these that are coming into ripeness here and we'll leave them on the countertop for a couple of days before we bag them up and that will help them get real ripe. Okay. This determinant variety here, Grand Marshal, it didn't fare too well in my uh, taste test, but it's a good looking tomato, and I'm sure if I just tasted it on its own, it would be fine. Let these come to full ripeness if you can on the vine, something like that. Those are really nice. Yeah, these are, these are impressive tomatoes too. Very prolific. This is a determinant variety as opposed to the edox over there, which are an indeterminate variety. Indeterminates will just keep growing and growing. But these determinants, they have a predetermined uh, amount of tomatoes that they will set for you, and then they're done, they give up. All right, get this bird netting back on here. This bird netting has saved all these tomatoes, and I really, I'm really glad I put that on there. That's perfect. Just like that. That's what I want. Now what surprises me about these Edox tomatoes is it's consistently in the 90s, yet I'm still getting fruit set. These flowers up here are still getting pollinated, and that's encouraging. Bird got that one. These are granaderos. They are a paste tomato. And if you let them get real ripe, they do really great in a sauce. So I'll pick these, these that are getting close to ripe so the birds don't get them. And uh, yeah, we'll put those in some more sauce. The brandy wines are giving up. That's uh, some blight damage and some heat damage combined. But I got one more fruit on here coming on. I'm gonna give that another day or two. And then that plant's coming out. Look down here. That's what a black beauty looks like when it gets really ripe and the birds find it. Yeah. It's one I won't be growing again. There's a plant that gave up. So, yeah. I'm going to have some room in here soon so I can put some more um, summer crops in here. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to put in here just yet. Let me get the rest of these tomatoes in. Well, there's today's tomato harvest. Not bad. Not bad at all. 
if you saw one of my recent videos, you saw me put these sweet potato slips in. And they're doing just fine. Putting on new growth. Yeah, one of them over here looks a little bug damaged, but that's okay. He'll grow out of that. New growth coming in down below those harmed leaves. But yeah, these are sweet potatoes. There's one in the middle that didn't make it, so we'll replace that one. Or not. These guys will fill this whole area. There's my uh, shovel over there, now covered in a fire ant bed. Lovely. Here's the okra. Okra's coming up, and over here the cowpeas are coming up just fine. So these are crops that will grow through the summer and produce in the heat. This is an old veteran, not a Peño, from a couple years ago, and I've let some fruit get too ripe, and the bugs have found it, but it's got a lot of fruit on it. If you like the flavor of jalapeno, but you don't like the heat, it's not a Peño is a good choice. Speaking of peppers, look at my Tabasco. Man, that's loaded. I was impressed the first time I grew these things. They get to be a huge bush, and they just put on tons of these Tabasco peppers. Tons of them. And so I've got this one here, and I've got another little one over there. Yeah, that's encouraging. Here's a little strange sweet pepper that I've been growing, and I don't remember the variety, but uh, that's about when you want to pick them, when they're nice and yellow like that. It's an unusual name. Eggplants putting on fruit. All my peppers are doing well. The poblanos, heavy with fruit. These Jedi jalapenos, that's the second flush of giant jalapenos I've got from those. More poblanos here. They're a little small. I want them to be bigger than that, but uh, I'll take them. And back over there, that's my Carmen peppers. I need to show you what I made with my Carmen peppers. Eggplant, putting on more blossoms. This eggplant's just about done because he gets stressed out. This uh, pot dries out too quickly and I can't stay on top of it. But I did harvest about six eggplants, aubergines, uh, from that one a couple days ago, so we're good. Got some sweet potatoes in a pot over here. Check out this chili tapin. Needs some water. See these pots? Yeah, you gotta water, you gotta stay on top of the water. But these are a native variety. And they also, I think the, they're the same pepper that goes as bird's eye pepper in some parts of Texas. But uh, these are super hot. My dad made some hot sauce for this stuff once that liked to kill me. Yeah, these are fiery little devils. The birds love them. Birds don't seem to be bothered by capsaicin, that oil that makes the chilies hot. They eat this stuff like candy. And that's how they get spread around. That's how the seeds get spread. But uh, I'm going to use these and dry them and make a pepper uh, powder with them. And who knows, maybe I'll give some to my dad. He can make some more of that uh, crazy devil hot sauce he makes. Those will put a whooping on you. I've been having some good fig production. They've been coming in quite nicely. This is a Conandria yellow. And I've never, I've never tasted this one because this is the first year it's given me fruit. But I did get some ripe fruits off of my Ronde de Bordeaux the other day. And that was nice and delicious. All right, Phoebe, you found it. We're waiting on these guys. That is a butternut squash hybrid. There's one. We're waiting on this guy to get ripe. Yeah, that's going to be good. So you can see on this uh, squash pit, there are some dead vines and there are some dying vines. And that's all because of squash vine borers. But you'll notice further down the vine, they get green again. And way out there, they're nice and dark green. That's because these vines have rooted where their nodes have touched the ground. And they've rooted in there. There's a whole nother plant, essentially. If that gets killed back here, this has roots and it will still grow. And that's why I like these cucurbita moshadas. They grow and they grow and they grow. My watermelon has been looking pathetic and some of it's died back. But I found this. Yeah, we got a little fruit there. Maybe some more hiding in these weeds, but I'm not going to get in there. Stir up the mosquitoes. We'll just let this jungle keep growing. In my citrus scale video showing you how to use neem oil you can see we've knocked the population back quite a bit but there's still some on there 
on this lime tree and the ants are still working it. So we're going to need another couple of uh, applications. In my grapes, my muscadine grapes, which we're going to get tons of this year, I have this damage. I think this is from Japanese beetles. It's got that characteristic look and they feed at night. I haven't been able to see them. So I'm probably going to need to come out here and treat with some sort of insecticide. I don't like to do it. And I think these plants could probably keep up with ripening their fruits. I think they're far enough along where they can keep up, but yeah, I don't know if I want to risk it though. It's a lot of fruit to ripen up. They need all the leaves they can get. So what do you suggest for a Japanese beetle infestation? Yeah, we got to do something. All right, here's our tomatoes cooking down. Been on here for about four hours and nothing in there but a little dash of olive oil to keep the initial burn from sticking to the bottom of the thing. And I had it piled up to the top with tomatoes. About every tomato I have in the house and the frozen edox tomatoes are in there. I chopped up a couple of bell peppers from the garden. There's an onion in there. And that's about it. There was some eggplant in there. You can put some eggplant as a thickener. But I didn't like the smell of that eggplant. It's got a, it, had, it had kind of a strong smell, so I've been fishing it out as I see them in there. But uh, yeah, you can use eggplant as a thickener for a tomato sauce. Now this is the biggest pot I've got, and I'd say that's about 12 inches tall. I don't know how much is in there. People are gonna ask me for a recipe. There's no recipe, I'm just making basic tomato sauce. Cook down your tomatoes, and then we're gonna blend them up. We're going to send them through this here strainer and thicken it up a bit and then we're going to can it in this pressure canner here. You don't have to pressure can, but uh, it's just quicker. So, yeah, man, that smells good. All right, here are the skins and the seeds that we've taken out. And now all we're left with is this wonderful sauce. We've got to thicken this up and it'll be time to can it. So that's it, just a quick update on the garden, a little bit of a harvest, and uh, yeah, summer, man, it's here with a vengeance, it's hot, but I thought you'd, you'd uh, maybe enjoy walking the garden with me and seeing what the bounty is. I'm really excited. It's a good day. Mm -hmm.